Hi everyone, this is Dan from Kidesign, and today we'll be doing a tutorial on Autodesk Tinkercad. So we'll look at how to start a new project and sign in, and how to get familiar with the interface, the menu and the grid, and also look at different viewing options of your model quickly. So the first thing to do is open Tinkercad.com. It is a browser-based um, program, which means that you don't need to install anything. Uh, you can run it on pretty much any machine and you don't need any uh, incredible specs to do that. So you open the Tinkercad website and the first thing to do is to sign in or sign up if you have an account. So if we just sign in, um, you have to make an Autodesk account which then you can use with any other Autodesk program including the more uh, sophisticated ones, the more professional ones. And once you sign in, you're going to have your dashboard, which has your designs and allows you to make new ones. Now, to start off, you click on Create New Design, and it will load the main interface. Now, as I mentioned, everything is in the browser, so everything is also cloud-based, and whatever you save is saved under your account, uh, and you don't save it on your computer. If you want to export things on your computer, for 3D printing afterwards, I'll show you how to do that. Now, just some basics. The interface of Tinkercad is very simple, very clean. Uh, you have a 3D view of your work plane, which is um, your three-dimensional grid. Now, the grid is uh, the workspace on which you're going to design your object, your um, creation, and you can change the size of the grid, but this pretty much will be enough for any models that you might 3D print. You might notice that Tinkercad actually um, is promoted as a 3D design and 3D printing software, which is, which is quite true. It's really good for 3D printing. It's um, all based around solid modeling, so it's really uh, quite hard to mess up things and, um, and start creating objects of your own which are not going to be easy to 3D print, so it's um, quite fail-proof in that sense, it's quite good. So the basic interface consists of the top toolbar which has um, the title of your project here. They give you a random title always, so if you click on that random title um, you can type in the name of your project, let's call it um, Key Design Tutorial one and um, that's now saved so if you click anywhere and start modeling that will be saved under that name if you want to go back to your designs you can click onto this icon here and you see the, the ones you've done before now um, to actually view the, the space in which you're going to be modeling you're using mainly uh, the buttons on your mouse so you have the left mouse button to select objects. Uh, the right mouse button is to rotate the view, or what's called orbit. So if you click the right mouse button and drag, you will move the viewpoint around. It's as if you're rotating the camera to view things. Now the scroll button, uh, the scroll wheel, is for zooming. And if you click the scroll wheel and drag, this is called panning. Now panning is almost as if you were moving the camera left, right, up and down instead of rotating it with the right mouse button. Now, the useful thing is that right here in the corner you have something called the view cube which is essentially allows you to concentrate on one um, specific view, so like the front, the, the sides, the top view, and so on. And then at the end of that, if you want to go back to the original 3D view, there's a little home button here, which if you click, will just bring you back to the default view. Now, let's just have, just make a simple object so I can show you uh, a few other things. Why would the front, top, and the side views be useful? Now, it's useful because uh, you might want to model something very precisely on the front view, so you can zoom in and, and view your object right from, the, from that side. Now the other useful thing is if you're um, if you're out and about um, viewing your model and you just want to quickly zoom back into 
your model, there's an option called Fit All in View. If you click that, it will fill the entire screen with your model. So if you've got this one cube here, it will fill it. If you've got another object back there, and you click Fit All in View, it will basically uh, zoom in so you can see both of them. And then again, you've got plus and minus for zooming on the left, and you've got uh, switch to orthographic view. The one we were viewing per previously was called perspective view, and orthographic has all the angles um, at uh, uh, 90 degrees, so that is more useful, in my opinion, if you're looking at objects from the front, the top, uh, etc., rather than in 3D. In 3D, it looks a bit awkward, because, but vice versa, if you're looking at it in perspective, you see, you won't, um, it's not as easy to model something in the top in front of you. So I tend to switch orthographic when looking at the straight views front, top, right, left, and perspective for the three dimensional view. The other thing to mention is the grid. Now, the grid um, can be changed in size. You have the edit grid button here in the top, in the bottom right, sorry, corner. You click edit grid. You can change between millimeters and inches. You can um, choose a size of your 3D printer. It doesn't have a huge choice, but if you've got any of these, you can choose the bed size, or you can just make your own. Just let's now change this to a slightly smaller grid, just to show you. You update the grid, and it will make it smaller. That is useful, especially if you're doing something for 3D printing, so that you know it fits on the bed of your printer. The other option here in the bottom right corner is Snap Grid. Now, if you notice, if I start dragging um, the, any of my objects, it will snap every millimeter whether it's moving left, right, up or down. But I can change that. I can say I want to snap every five millimeters. So suddenly it will start snapping at bigger intervals. Or vice versa, I can do that for smaller ones. So if I want to move it very precisely, half a millimeter at a time, I can do that. For default, it's fine to use one millimeter and then change it to uh, smaller or bigger, depending on your design. Uh, just a few other things uh, about the interface. On the right here, you might have noticed all these um, basic shapes. Now that is, the majority of time, that is how you will be making your models using these basic shapes. And we'll cover that in the next tutorial. And then um, on the top bit here, you've got your uh, profile in the corner. You've got this little uh, man with a plus sign. That is if you want to uh, share your design and actually invite someone else to work on it with you, which is really great for a collaborative projects. So if you click on that, you can generate a link, similar how you would do it in um, Google Docs or Google Drive. So you then copy this link and send it to someone um, via email or whatever, and then they can work on the same design with you. And it says here about 336 hours until the link expires, which is basically, what does that come to? Uh, 28 days. So you have 28 days um, for this link, to use this link. The other few things here is you've got, uh, this is your design panel, which we're in now. You've got a blocks panel, which is basically a Minecraft style interface where you can change colors of your design and then you can export it in a Minecraft format. And then you've got bricks, which is a Lego style view. And you can share that as an image, um, as a, a Lego style um, drawing of your design. And then you've got shape generators for creating your own shapes using JavaScript. Uh, the lower part of the top right has all the modification options uh, and things like grouping and aligning, uh, which we'll cover in the next tutorial and show you how to actually 
uh, do more interesting things with the shapes. And then you've got import, export, and share. Now, import allows you to import uh, both 3D and 2D uh, shapes uh, that you might have created in another software. And exporting allows you to export in SDL or OBJ, which are two quite common 3D uh, formats. And SDL is probably the most commonly used for 3D printing. And then you can also export SVG for uh, 2D things if you want to perhaps laser cut your design. And the, the, the other useful thing is you can choose between exporting everything uh, from your design or exporting just certain shapes that you've highlighted beforehand. Right, so that's about um, everything I have to say about the basic interface of Tinkercad and how you move around and how you, uh, what things you can use. Now, if you want to find out more about designing, actually, and basic modeling, uh, please have a look at the next tutorial. Thank you.